channel. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about i3 versus BSPWM. So when you're choosing a, a, a tiling window manager, there's really two things you want to consider, maybe three things, for sure two things, <laughs> two things you want to consider, you know, when you're making your decision. The first is, do you want a manual tiling window manager or do you want a dynamic tiling window manager? So let's talk, we'll talk a little bit about the differences. A manual tiler base, and I'll show you this when I talk about i3, uh, is basically means you choose where the window appears next in the tiling tree or whatever. Uh, a dynamic tiling window manager means it has a set layout. So it means that usually, usually this is the 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 main and stack layout. So you have a master here and a you know a whole bunch of stacks on this side. I'll show you that when I get to BSPWM. So that's one the first thing you should consider because those things do make a difference between how you use things you wouldn't really think it would um i used to be a big proponent of manual tilers like i3 um mainly because i really wanted that power to choose where my window spawned uh, which you don't get in a dynamic tiling window manager um but i've kind of been persuaded to the the dark side and and, and i've learned to enjoy dynamic tiling window managers so the, the second thing you'll want to consider when you're choosing a, a tiling window manager is how it's configured. So it's not as big of a deal with the two window managers I'm going to be talking about today because the cons the configuration files for both of these are very easy to uh, get a hold of, even for new users. These are both very new user friendly window managers. Unlike something, say, like DWM or Xmonad even. You know, those are things that are much more complicated because they're code, you're editing the source code directly. So you'd have to, if you're using DWM, you have to know a little bit of C. If you're using uh, Xmonad, you need to know Haskell, uh, you know, or some Haskell at least, and, uh, you know, or being willing to learn those things, right? So those are the really the two things you really need to pay attention to when you're choosing a Tyler window manager. Now, it's not as, like I said, it's not as big of a deal with, these particular two window managers because both of these two have configuration files that are very easy to get into. Now, there are different configuration files. So let's uh, let's uh, jump into uh, i3 so you can see what a, a configuration file for i3 looks like. So this right here is i3. This is the i3 config file. This is not the standard i3 config file. This started out its life as an Arco i3 config file. The standard i3, i3 config file <laughs> looks like this here. I think I, can, I think I can zoom in a little bit here so you can actually see this. Um, and it's about about 200 lines. Mine's about 100 lines, but that's because I use SXHKD for all of my key bindings. That's not something that comes out of the box. You have to actually go through and do that. I have a video which you can see the cards or in the video description below. The standard i3 config file has all the bindings right inside it. Um, standard i3 config file configuration also has its own bar, which will run along the bottom. It's called i3 status. It is configure configurable through its own configuration file. Uh, it can also be configured a little bit through uh, this here, but then there's also a, uh, a configuration file for the modules as well. So, and that can run scripts just like any other bar can. I'm using Polybar. I have Polybar for both i3 and BSPWM. As far as I'm aware, BSPWM does not come with its own bar. So if you need a bar for ice for BSPWM, you'll have to provide your own. Most people use Polybar. You could use something like Bumblebee or Lemon Bar, or probably you probably could probably could use XMobar if you really wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to because you didn't ha then have to install all the Haskell dependencies. That'd be kind of a pain in the butt. We talk. I talked at the beginning about the configuration file. So the i3 is written in C as far as I'm aware, uh, but you don't have to actually know any C in order to configure it, configure it because it's written in this kind of user-friendly syntax. Um, you know, bind sim makes sense because that's binding the letter U and then executing this command. Uh, you know, it's very user-readable, and that's not something you can really say with C because C is a little bit different. And you have to have the knowledge of, you know, where do I put the comma? Where do I put a semicolon? You know, um, how do the comments work? It's, it's completely different. Um, so i3 is one of those, is one of a few window managers that is not configured in the language in which it's written. So, and that's a good thing for beginners because 
it allows you to go through as a new person and you know do all the configuration files without having to learn a specific programming language it's also kind of a lazy way of doing it because you know Really, if you're using a tiling window manager, you should be willing to learn something, because really, if you're learning this, you're not you're not going to be able to take a lot of the skills of, uh, you know, i3 and then transfer them over into using something like BSPW because of the way they're configured. D DWM is is configured directly with the source code, and you have to kind of learn to see. So that's one of the things that's kind of uh, different. Now we'll talk about BSPWM when we switch over there, but the configuration files are well very noob friendly are completely different because bspwm will is their configuration files is actually just a script and i'll show you that like i said when we get into the bspwm uh, part of the video so really we want the last thing i want to talk about because remember at the beginning we talked about those two things that you can you should consider when you know choosing a window a window manager this i3 is a manual tiling window manager that which that means is when you spawn new windows they all spawn in the same direction until you tell uh, i3 not to. So with mod v, you can start. I can start um, spawning vid windows in a different direction, and then mod h, like this, and it just will keep going on forever and ever. And you can choose. You know, I can. I can then go back to mod v, and I mean they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, eventually, I'm assuming that PyCom or something will crap out on me, <laughs> so I probably don't want to keep going too far, but, so I'll just close some of these. But that's what a manual tiler is. It allows you to choose where the next window is spawned. You always have that control. Whereas a dynamic tiling window manager like BSPWM or DWM or Xmonad, they all have a set layout. Uh, some of them you can change the layout, but whatever layout you're in, that's the way your windows are always going to be unless you move you know, you, you change to floating or something. So that is i3 in a very general nutshell. Uh, I would c consider i3 the best window manager for new users, just simply because the configuration files is, is very readable. It's also very configurable. If once you move, move past your noobness, you can uh, do a lot of configuration file configuration in it to kind of get your feet wet. Now you can't do as much configuration as if you were editing the source code directly, like you you do in you know DWM. But there are a lot of things that you can do with it um, and, and expand it by bringing in other things. So like I've gone through and moved all of my key bindings to SXHKD. That's something that you can do. Uh, you can bring in Polybar, obviously, if you don't want to use the i3 bar or i3 status. And there's just tons of the stuff you can do. Now, a lot of people will consider i3 uh, limiting because it's not directly editing the source code. Because you can't go through and code something in yourself. But really, how many people really do that? Not many people really do that. Uh, I don't find it limiting at all. I think it's really good for new users. So we're going to pause there. And we're going to move over to my, DS my BSPWM install and we'll look a little bit at what a dynamic tiling window manager looks like and what the bspwm config looks like so um, we're going to pause there and we'll be back in just a second okay so i'm back and we're going to show i'm going to show you bspwm here in just a second the main differences you'll see in bspwm is i guess it's going to be the way it's configured and the way the window manager lays out windows as their spawns so uh I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to show you a little bit about why I like BSPWM just a little teensy bit better than i3. Um, and that's going to be, it's weird because I've spent a lot less time in BSPWM, but I do like a lot of things that BSP, BSPWM does uh, outside, you know, than what i3 does. This is what BSPWM looks like, and, and again, this is going to be a um, different than what it looks like out of the box. And I'm going to talk at the end a little bit about some a few programs that you're going to need for both i3 and BSPWM that will make your life better. But before I get to that, I just want to show you what BSPM, BSPWM basically is. So, uh, first of all, it's a dynamic tiling window manager. That means that when you spawn something, it's going to look like this. This is the Fibonacci layout. I think it's what is what it's called. It means every window that spawned is exactly half of what was spawned before it. So the you know this window here is half of this one, this one's half of this one, and so on and so forth. I believe you can change the the layout. Um, I think it has other layouts. I'm not sure about that. Um, 
this is it's a little bit different than other dynamic tiling window managers in that it's not like the master and stack layout because they're a master and stack means they're all kind of these all over here in the stack would be completely even it's basically you know uh, the same thing they're just different sizes um like i said i'm not i'm pretty sure that you can patch in or something other um layouts but i've just never done that um the standard uh configuration file is actually only like 18 lines long uh so if you're if you've installed this from scratch you're, you're not going to get a lot here one of the dependencies in this is sshkd because bspwm itself does not handle any uh key bindings at all so you have to have an external program in order to do that so i will sh um if i do this i'm going to see oops let's zoom in here cd into dot config uh, bsp pwm and sxhkd and vim sxhkd rc this is these are the key bindings that you'd use with sxhkd now if you if we go up a, a level uh, cd dot dot last your uh, configuration file is bspwm rc this is what mine looks like we, we close that i think vim into bsp pwm rc and that's what this is what mine looks like now this started out as a uh arco linux configuration file again i believe uh you at the beginning you do an auto start and then you have things that control the gaps and the padding and stuff like that for the ratio of the split um and so on and so forth. Now this is, I think I'm, I've not gone through and changes anything anyways, but a lot of this stuff could actually go away because a lot of the stuff is comments. There's 126 lines long, so it's a little bit longer than the standard, but it's not anything crazy like the Arco Linux i3 config file was, which was just crazy long. So, so we've shown you the, uh, you know, the way the windows are laid out. So if you'll notice at the top of this, but if we go to the top, you'll notice this is just a, a bash script or a, a shell script in this case uh that's all it is so if you know how to code in bash at all basically that's the syntax you're going to be using so bsp bspc is the command that interacts with the window manager itself and so bspc config whatever bspc what uh you know also manages a lot of stuff in sxhkd so that's the difference between i3 and uh, uh, BSPWM is that BSPWM is actually just a shell script that uh, you know that you can edit just like any other shell script. It's very noob friendly as well because sh uh, shell scripting is not hard to learn. There's it's not horrible in terms of syntax like C or Haskell or something or even Python. Python can get really bogged down in the commas uh, if if you've ever seen a, a like a Qtile config or something. So that is what uh, BSPWM basically is it's, as I said at the beginning of the video those are the two things that really differentiate any window manager the, how the how it's configured i3 and BSPWM and i3 it's uh, kind of a, a user readable kind of thing that's kind of its own languageish kind of thing and then BSPWM it's a shell script the other thing that determines what you know what man, window manager you want to choose is how the windows are laid out so in this case you have a more kind of off traditional uh dynamic window manager kind of thing whereas with uh i3 you're getting a manual tiler which means you can choose where your your windows spawn in both of these there are several programs that you're going to want to, to download in order to get um to make it usable one of the things you're going to want to do is download some kind of wallpaper setter so when I first started using i3, I used FEH. I will uh, probably link these in the description below if I remember. Uh, but now I use something called Nitrogen. So if we do, uh, this is what Nitrogen looks like. Mine's always a little bit different because I don't know why they won't spread out like that. It's always been weird. Um, you know, so if I just choose you know, this here and apply, I can just quit that and I have a new wallpaper. Ta-da! That's what Nitrogen is. And in your... In your um, cd into dot config bspwm and then ls here i think it's an auto start yeah so 
So we, the auto start thing here will actually go through. It will start your, your poly bar. And there's another one here, nitrogen dash dash restore. Basically, that will allow you to go through and have your wallpaper start up at the beginning. So you'll need an auto start file of some kind if you use BSPWM. That's something that you don't really need as an i3 because an i3, I, the i3 config file can actually go through and start up all of its scripts right within the configuration file. I, after a while, I went through and actually created an auto start file for i3 simply because I wanted SXH. I kind of wanted to configure that. I wanted to compress that config file down into under 100 lines. And that's just, you know, my ADD acting up. Um, so you'll need a, a wallpaper can, uh, setter of some kind. In BSPWM, you'll want, you'll have to have some kind of daemon to do your key binding. So SXHKD is the one that is uh, set as a dependency, but you could use it. Uh, there are other ones. Uh, SXHKD was actually designed to work with with BSPWM, so it's really well integrated. Uh, it's very easy to set up. In i3, you don't need to do that because the configuration file has all of your your key bindings right in it. But I've actually gone through and moved the all your the SX, all the key bindings to SXHKD just because again I wanted to get that config file you know to be smaller. Another thing you'll want to, is something to manage your power settings. So especially if you're on a laptop, you'll want something that will config to will monitor when your screen turns off, when it goes to sleep, and so on and so forth. Uh, I use XFCE settings that controls you know, pretty much all your power settings and comes with a, a few other things. Uh, in both of them, if you want to set GTK themes, you'll need something called LX Appearance, and that will allow you to set your GTK themes and icon themes and cursor themes as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure most distributions, probably when you install you know, the regular develop pa packages you probably get xrander so you probably won't need xrander but if you're not interested in using command line to manage your monitors you can look up something called arander and that is a GUI application that you can use uh, to manage your monitors and your displays and such, so on and so forth um, I think that that is it so basic so let's just do a little bit of a conclusion here I said I wanted to say there was one thing that I really liked about BSPWM that over over i3, and and that's kind of the config file. I real the stock i3 config file is can get very very heavy. Not I'm not not necessarily heavy, but very very long. That like the Arco i3, I've said this before in this video, is like 500 you know lines long, and that's fine, but it's kind of unwieldy, uh, and I like this the. the I like you know, the BSPWM one is like 18 words lines long to begin with. I mean, you have to add some other stuff in order to make it work. But even this one here, which is you know kind of pimped out because Arco uh, is only is less than 200 lines long, and that's because you know it requires a separate you know key bindings file. And you know, I like that it's a shell script. I'm into shell scripting, and that you know, it, you know, it just it makes me feel like I'm more interacting with things. BSP, if you're planning on doing something with like DWM or Xmonad, I think BSPWM is the great one to start on because it gives you gets you practicing actually interacting with code instead of doing whatever it is you do with that die three config file. So that's one of the one of the reasons why I like BSPWM. But I would still say that i three is probably the more noob friendly, just because the code is a little bit more readable. But both of these window managers are very very good for window for new users which one you choose again will just going to depend on how you like the windows to, windows to spawn and which way of configuring it you're more comfortable with whether it's you know editing a script file or doing it in the way i3 has chosen to do it now the last thing i want to talk about is uh documentation i'm actually going to go back to the uh main screen for this a real good reason to to use i3 if you're a new user is the documentation. So this is the documentation page. You can get that this by going to i3 i3wm.org and just clicking on the doc section. It's spectacular. It's just I mean just line after line of awesomeness. It shows you all the key bindings using i3 from the, directly from the beginning. It's just I've been using pretty much window managers for like the last year or so. And I've used pretty much all of them, all the main ones anyways. And you'll never find any window manager out there that has better documentation than i3. It just, I mean, it can't even be debated. It's so good. 
<laughs> uh, the only one that I've found comes close is Qtile, and that's a little bit different because their their website's a little bit hard to navigate, and it's a little bit more technical because you have to know some Python. I3's documentation documentation is really really very good. Um, I I can't can't say enough about it. BSPWM on the other hand has crap documentation. I mean it's just not all that great at all. Uh, this is it, one page. Uh, no like table of contents or anything. The configuration file. I mean, you gotta remember that configuration file is only eighteen lines long to by default. So they're not expecting you to you know do much. But it covers everything you need to know. It's just not as in depth as you know what the i three one is. So that is uh the another reason why if you're really really new to tiling window managers, I would go the i three route. If you've used i3 for a little, if you've used Tiling Window Manager for a little while, but you're still not comfortable taking the jump to something like DWM or Qtile or anything like that, then try BSPWM because it's a little bit more complicated than i3 with less documentation and will kind of force you to experiment a little bit more. So uh, that is it for this little versus competitive thing, whatever that we did today. If you if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, hit the notification icon thing so you don't miss Linux tutorial videos, uh, which I, or not tutorial videos, any kind of videos because we do Linux uh, rants and all that kind of stuff um, pretty much seven days a week. I th I'm pretty sure I'm going to take tomorrow off, but who never knows. If you want to sub subscribe to or support us through Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to go try to edit this video now, so uh, we'll see you next time.